If you've ever tried to make a cut around the curve of your bathtub, you may have been stumped. Now in this case, I'm using micro cement, so I actually don't need to cut the tile, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you guys how to do that in case you wanted to do it in your bathroom. So let's get to it. So all I'm gonna do is take this gauge tool, these contour to spaces, and you can use these for making templates for wood or any sort of woodwork as well, but they're great as a tool for tiling. And you can just find these on Amazon. I'll put a link. Uh, below in case you want to check one of these out, but you're gonna just push them all back all your lines your little pieces because each of these move individually and then we're just gonna go to the edge of our tub and then sometimes you have to do like an individual push to get each little one as close as you can and then obviously I'm just showing you how to make the curve. If you wanted to have it on an exact spot, you would take some measurements too. But so now I have that curvature of my tub. Now I'm just using a marker in this case because I'm just trying to give you a rough explanation. If you wanted an exact measurement, you a pencil is it gonna be a thinner line, but that's gonna wash off if you get it wet if you're using uh, wet saws. So they have markers that are like Pika markers. That might be something you wanna look into when you're trying to get these specific little angles. So I know that right here, my little piece starts about right there, depending on if you're doing a bull nose or a miter and you'd have to factor that in. So then, depending on the height of my tile, all I would do Now we know our cut. In this case, I'm using my angle grinder with a diamond blade on it. You could totally use your wet saw for this portion, but I've been having some troubles with my wet saw lately, so I'm just gonna cut this by hand. But the important part is you can cut these straight lines. Just make sure you undercut, don't overcut. Obviously, if you take too much off, you can't go back. But the point is we're undercutting here because we're gonna use our little secret weapon that I'm gonna show you guys to smooth everything out on this curved section. I'm specifically showing you guys how ugly this cut looks right now. It does not have to be perfect with your initial cut because we are gonna actually use this cone. This attaches to your grinder and it's a diamond cone and you can use it to smooth curves and circles and it's a super, super handy tool. You can also get this on Amazon, so I'll put a link below for you guys, but that's what's really gonna help us clean this up. Then I'm gonna take my hand polishing pad and just use that to smooth out the cut. That way, if I have any flakes or chips from my cut, I can really just make this a nice cut edge. After checking my tile in the space, I wanted to make a few micro adjustments. Just remember that you can always take more off, but once it's gone, you gotta start over. You also always have the option of these polishing pads or grinding pads that attach to your grinder. They're gonna be a little bit more aggressive and they're gonna be able to take more off quicker. If I'm doing micro adjustments, I like to use the hand polishing pads, but if you have a bigger job or you need to remove a little bit more, then you might wanna use a power polishing pad. So there it is, there's our final cut. All right, guys, with this trick in your tool belt, you are one skill set closer to your professionally finished looking DIY bathroom. If you like this video and want to learn more about bathroom renovations and tile work, please go ahead and click that subscribe button below and like this video, and I'll see you on the next one.